I uh, I yeah. tried to help him join. Oh, he's here. Yeah, he's Hello, there. Sir, he's there. He's there, man. He's there. Uh, I don't think we can hear you, Silvio. Silvio, hello, hi, dear. I think he's having some technical problems with his microphone. Okay. So, Silvio, can you try and fix that, please? Yeah, Silvio, you can uh, uh, rejoin. Okay, so, my dear Shining Stars, let us tell uh, let's let you know that, uh, ma'am, from Romania, and uh, as we have, like I think first uh, teacher, I think from Romania, uh, <laughs> we all have different teachers from different uh, countries and we are really fortunate about it. So this, uh, again, we have amazing global educator with us where you are going to learn a lot from our intellectual personality. So over to you, Madeline, ma'am. Um, so I, uh, I am an English teacher. Uh, I teach English as a foreign language or, or, or as a second language in Romania. Um, but, uh, you know, as a teacher, we don't only teach English. We, only, we also teach uh, children how to learn. Yeah, so not only English, but anything and how to develop and um, improve themselves, you know. So um, today um, I would like us to talk about multiple intelligences now have you ever heard about multiple intelligences anyone does it ring a bell does it sound familiar oh uh, yes ma'am i heard i heard about the multiple intelligence there are theories i think lots of theories regarding this no yes there are um but uh, not, not many people have heard about it and not many teachers apply this. So what do you think? Even if you haven't heard about multiple intelligences, yes? Um, what do you think uh, this refers to in your opinion? Okay. Uh, according to me, ma'am, I think every person has a different ability to do the things. Like every person is different to each other. Uh, like if, if uh, someone has artistic uh, intelligence and the other one has a, a numerical intelligence, so some has the linguistic intelligence. So I think it depends person to person that every person is different with it, I mean, to each other. Yes, that is, that is correct. That is exactly um, my point. The thing is, we can use this uh, theory of multiple intelligences, if we apply it, uh, we can use it to uh, learn different subjects. So it doesn't mean that if you are good uh, at logical thinking and mathematics, you can only be good at maths. No, you can be uh, good at anything and you can learn whatever you are trying to learn. So, um, can you tell me, each one of you in turn, um, can you please tell me a few things about yourself? Can you introduce yourselves? And also tell me, what is your favorite subject in school? Janani, can you start, please? I'm happy to see Hello. you again. Hi, I'm Johnny. Then my favorite subject, now I'm grade up seven, then my favorite subject will be like social because I'm very eager about learning about social. And then my aim is also to become an archaeologist to dig the, so, uh, to dig many uh, excavated materials from the past. That awesome. Is That's awesome, Janani. Thank you. Okay, somebody else, uh, Yashvan. Ma'am, my hello, ma'am. Greetings, ma'am. Ma'am, I am Yashvan, and my my favorite subject is science, cause I am in very much interested in science science experiments, and you know some thing to prepare like gadgets and some technology. That's why I like science. 
that's cool. We need scientists in the world. So Yashvan, I'm sure you're going to be an awesome and a great scientist. Thank you. Um, let's see who else. Uh, Radia. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. Okay, I'm doing my best. It is completely correct, ma'am. You're pronouncing really amazing. <laughs> it's perfect. Yes, yeah, sir, Radia. Greetings, ma'am. I'm Radia. My favorite subject is maths because maths is fun. Uh, fun with, uh, and we can learn it very fast. Well, that's rare. Like most children think that maths is complicated and hard to learn, but you're learning it very fast. So uh, that's that's great. <laughs> and uh, what grade are you in? I'm in second grade. Second grade, yes. Okay, and uh, the boy next to you? Greetings of the day, ma'am. My name is Mohanish, and I like the subject maths and science. I want to be an engineer in robotics. Yes, ma'am. That's my uh, that's my favorite subject as I like it. Mm -hmm. It is according to me. It is an easy subject rather than biology. It uh, we have to learn many of the things uh, by heart. If we miss okay. any, then it can be a problem there. Indeed. It, there are subjects in which you have to memorize things, but in mathematics, you have to learn logically, right? Okay, uh, Komal? Yes, ma'am. So, uh, are you a student? Uh, no, ma'am, I am not a student. Yes, I am a student of uh, Madhvi, ma'am. Uh, I'm a mother of two kids now. Uh, I'm MA Beard, I'm in English, and uh, now I'm pursuing master's in education. Congratulations, and uh, good luck to you in your educational pursuit. Um, and uh, best wishes to your children. I also have Thank three you. kids, so uh, <laughs> I know it's difficult uh, to study and to have uh, to take care of the kids at the same time. So congratulations for your efforts. Thank you so much. Uh, Okay, ma'am, Sylvie, who has joined, ma'am. Uh, Sylvie, kindly unmute. Uh, yeah, kindly. Um, yes, yes, we can hear you, my dear. Yes, hello. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? I'm very well. Very well, all um, right. So here we go. Uh, guys, say hello to him. Let's see. As you wish, greeting to ma'am, say hello to your one new Romanian friend, right? <laughs> And Sylvia, you can also say hello to your Indian friends. Yes, uh, hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello. How hello. Are you? Sylvia, can you tell us a few things about yourself, please? Uh, yes, I am 14 years old. Uh, I'm in seventh grade. Um, uh, I, I don't really know what else to say. My birthday is in November. Uh, okay. Uh, you can talk a little bit maybe about uh, your your school, your town. Uh, uh, because you, we, yeah, he, Sylvie is my student, actually, and we live in the same town uh, in Azuga, which is a mountain town. We are surrounded by mountains and forests here. So for those of you who love nature, we are basically in the middle of nature here. Uh, and by the way, naturalist intelligence is also one type of, uh, of intelligence. Now, Silvio, what is your favorite subject? Because many of the children have already told us uh, about uh, what subject they are best at in school. What about I you? I would say... I would say my favorite subject is physics. I'm really passionate about uh, stuff surrounding physics or astronomy. Okay, and uh, what do you want to become? What are your future plans? I would love to become an astronaut or a pilot. Uh, 
Okay, thank you, Silvio. So um, after we have this discussion about the multiple intelligences, uh, you are going to be able to ask questions uh, to each other and get to know more about each other, okay? Uh, now we also have uh, Aditi, I think. Yes, ma'am. So, are you a student? Yes, ma'am. I'm a student. Yes, ma'am. They all are my students in spoken English. They they all are language learners. Though they might be a doctor, nurse over here, but they all are language learners. Some are advanced, some are intermediate English, but they all wanted to connect with you. So most of them tried uh, hard, but you know, most of their timings are not matchable with this. So yeah. Yes, Aditi, ma'am is always is asking about your favorite subject and why it is your favorite. That is also you have to include. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, ma'am. So, ma'am, I'm Aditi and my favorite subject because I'm in a uh, ninth grade. So, my favorite subject is in maths because uh, behind the reason because I in, in this uh, maths concept is just too much and I'm learning fast in maths and the formulas, the concepts are, you know, learn very fastly and easily. Because, you know, maths is my favorite subject, so I'm also interested in maths. And uh, there are many formulas to learn and many uh, interesting concepts to learn. So maths is my favorite subject. It's Awesome. Thank you. And uh, I think uh, Rekha is uh, the only person I haven't asked yet. So uh, what is your favorite subject? Or my know. favorite subject is biology. Mm -hmm. mm. It is my favorite subject because um, it is tell about our lifestyle and body. And I, I am also working as a nurse. So I need every time. Of course. For environment, yes. body. It's part of your... Uh of your job, of your professional life. Um, Ma'am, can okay. I? Yes. I'm not very sure who is speaking. Ma my favorite subject is science because I want... Ma'am, yes, Ma I spotlighted her. So. Yes. Ma'am, I want... Ma'am, my favorite subject is science because I want to become a doctor. A doctor. Whoa. Uh, congratulations and, and good luck to you. Oh, we have um, Thank you, many more participants now. Uh, yes. Greetings, ma'am. Hello. My favorite subject is also mathematics. Uh, I love, I'm very fast in doing calculations. And then even in my schools, my uh, my teacher used to say me a calculator. That's why I am very, like my, my favorite subject is uh, mathematics. That's fantastic. So uh, you're like a real life Matilda, you know, Matilda, the character who could uh, calculate things in her mind very quickly. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Gunika, I think, or Janisha, I think you are trying to talk to us, but you have to unmute. Yes? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I like uh, uh, my favorite subject is uh, uh, history, but uh, when I am in school, so I, uh, I uh, learn it about only a few things but I like to study it about more because it tells about our uh, thing uh, the things that happened in uh, in previous time in ancient times uh, that uh, so I like history most. That's true and uh, history is very important because if we learn from the past events we want to do the same um uh, we won't make the same mistakes, right? Okay, so we will uh, make uh, better decisions in the future. Okay, everyone. Now, um, do you think these subjects that you are very good at, at like mathematics, uh, science, 
social studies, history. Do you think these can help you learn English? Do you think there's any connection between mathematics and English, for example? Yes, uh, Monish? Yes, ma'am. And whenever uh, we have to study anything, language is the uh, basically it is the essential part in everything. Like we are talking. If uh, I knew only maths and science, I won't be able to talk to you. Therefore, um, uh, our languages, linguistic, uh, and all are very important to understand and communicate with others, other people. That's true. So basically, if we are good at English, we can speak English well, uh, our horizon broadens, okay? So we have access to more information, to more opportunities, right? We can talk to other people, uh, we can study uh, other topics or maybe in another country. So yes, langu uh, language learning, especially English, uh, opens up a lot of opportunities. But what about the other way around? So uh, having other types of intelligence, such as the mathematical one, does that help us with English? So English helps with maths, but maths with English, what do you think? Would that help? Anyone, any opinion on this? Yes, guys, turn on toilets. As you know, Melissa, ma'am, we have, and she's a maths teacher. But I always connect her to converse with you, right? And we always give a mathematical conversation, isn't it? Again, we have uh, like a, a geography teacher, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. We, like, we always, you know, connect with uh, Nana, ma'am. She's a geography teacher. So this is how us ma'am is asking that how this subject can be vice versa connects together with the English language. Yes, Johnny, go ahead, my dear. You were saying something. Ma'am, I, I I think that 50% it is it is helpful and it is not. Because max is uh, max contains only numbers, then numbers no need any language. Uh, if we come to like word problems, we need English, then only we can understand that and we can explain. We can go through that. So I'm thinking 50% needed, 50% not needed. That's it, ma'am. Thank you for your input. That's a very, uh, very good uh, input and ideas. Yes, uh, Gunika? Ma'am, shall I? Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's listen to Gunika and then uh, Yashasvi. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. I agree to a uh, journey. Uh, English in English, we uh, English is uh, is everywhere. Uh, if we have to uh, uh, learn history, so we uh, know uh, no English uh, reading of uh, English. And if we want to learn e about events, then also we uh, know uh, reading of English. And uh, for maths also, we need to learn English also because uh, how how can uh, everywhere we can find English? So uh, how uh, we ca we cannot prefer uh, many times to Hindi only because English is a professional language, so we have to learn it because it uh, because uh, it is very important language to learn. Uh, if we do, uh, go in foreign countries, so we cannot speak in Hindi only because their accent are different and our accents are different. Yes, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, this uh, this idea of accent, I will pick up on it uh, later on. Let's listen to Yashas V now. Okay, okay ma'am. Ma'am, I agree to Germany uh, uh, because if we have to learn no number name in English, so first we have to learn English. So then we are able to uh, write English uh, in maths. Okay, yes, that's a good point. So you need to know a bit of mathematics in order to learn certain things in English. Um, let's listen to Sylvie well, also. Sylvie, would you like to add something, my dear? 
Yes. Um, yeah. I I was thinking that uh math is very similar to English since English is like the most spoken language in the world. Um, so it's very important for communication to know English. And math is similar because we can use math to explain basically everything. So basically the language of everything, our universe and stuff like that. So it is it's very important to to know both of them for communication. Thank you, Silvio. Um, yes, so uh, English is uh, the most widely spoken language. Yeah, English and Mandarin Chinese, right? <laughs> like people say. Uh, but uh, mathematics is the universal language. So if we ever get to talk to aliens, we're going to talk to them through maths, probably, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, not only this, but by learning mathematics, uh, you, your brain gets used to certain algorithms. Algorithms, sorry. Um, and uh, grammar, yeah, with its rules, is somewhat similar to mathematics. Okay, there are some formulas that you have to remember in order to speak correctly, right? There are certain things, especially in the English language. Uh, which act exactly like in mathematics, such as you have the S uh, in the plural. Yeah, the subject has an S because it's plural. The verb won't have the S anymore. But if the subject is singular, then the verb will have the S, you know? It's like you can have it either there or here, like in a, in a mathematical equation, yeah? You can't have it in both, uh, both ways, yeah, both sides. Uh, not only this, but maths help you with, in learning English because, um, you know, there are several uh, certain, um, as we were talking about, uh, about accent or about intonation, um, there is um, a certain rhythm or a certain uh, sequence, okay? And being used to this sequence from maths can help you later on with learning English. So yes, even mathematical intelligence can help you with learning languages. Uh, and I started with maths because this was uh, the topic that you said is very, uh, you are very good at, most of you. Uh, but there are, other, there are other people who uh, are good at music. Yeah, they have music skills that can also help them with learning a language because uh, there's this uh, intonation, yeah? There's the accent. And you can pick these up more easily if you are trained musically, right? Other people are good at sports. And of course, um, many people would say, well, sports have nothing, nothing to do with English. How can you learn English if you're good at sports? Well, you can learn through gestures by associating uh, different movements of the body with different uh, words or phrases, okay? So movement can also help you learn English, but not only English. Also, um, people who are good with, um, with body movement will also most probably be good at theater and skits, right? So um, as a teacher... If somebody uh, seems to have a talent from this point of view, you know, um, I, I have them move around in the classroom more. If I let them move, they will also learn more easily, you know, because they associate the language that, that they learn during the class with the activity that they are best at. So uh, what I would like you to, to understand most of all is that if you were born with a certain talent, that's awesome, but it doesn't mean that you cannot be good at other things, okay? Some people might have told you um, something like, well, you are good at this, uh, but not very good at that. The thing is, you can build on what you are good at 
in order to develop, yeah, to improve and to get better at other things as well. So use your strength. First of all, identify it because everybody has a certain strength, okay? A certain thing that they are very good at. Identify that strength and then use it, okay, to, to learn more, to develop other types of intelligence. Don't believe that if you were not born with a linguistic intelligence, it means you're not good at languages. That's false, okay? And don't let anybody tell you that, yeah? Or if you were not born with mathematical intelligence, okay, naturally, it doesn't mean that you cannot learn mathematics, okay? So uh, basically trust, trust in yourself. Um, would anybody else uh, like to comment on what I've said? Do you agree? Do you not agree? What is your opinion on this? Mom, shall I? Please, sure. Mom, I uh, uh, agree with you. Thank you, Shazvi, <laughs> for... Uh... Dear, you just thought Tito say agree, but why do you agree with ma'am? That is what you have to add. Yes, Monish. Ma'am, shall I? Yes, please. Ma'am, I agree with you as you have spoken that if someone says that you have born without mathematical intelligence, so that doesn't mean that we can't learn math. So, ma'am, that's the point. I agree with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I hope you remember this and you're never discouraged, yeah, from uh, from learning something that you are interested in just because people say uh, you are not naturally talented at that. Because remember that hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Have you ever heard this before? So somebody who is talented but doesn't work hard won't get very far. But if you work hard, even if you're not talented naturally, you will become very good. Okay? Now, Monish, what uh, what do you want to share with us? Please. Um, I agree with you. But I have, uh, basically, I have a question. That we cannot master all the subjects at a time. Like, we, like you said, we can do... The other thing also, but we cannot master all the subjects at a time. And therefore, we have to choose only one subject uh, for, like, we can say for career. So uh, then we have to choose only the master subject we, we are in. We cannot rely that uh, we will do the hard work and we can continue on uh, this subject. Yes. Uh, yes, Monish, you are raising a very good point. So, um, indeed, it is important to have a well-rounded education, okay? So, as, uh, as a person, as, as people in the world, we should know a little bit of everything, okay? A little bit of history, a little bit of geography, so we know the continents, the oceans, the seas, yeah, what, what country is where, okay? This is basic uh, knowledge that we should have. Um, the same with maths and uh, biology and so on. But of course, we cannot be experts in all domains. At some point, we are going to have to choose a field and a path, okay? And uh, we are going to focus on that. Um, some paths are, um, how should I call them? Um, academic. Yeah, and others are uh, vocational. And the vocational ones are the ones where people are most likely to say, you need talent to do this, okay? So now it depends on you whether uh, you, you want to work hard and achieve uh, a high level in something that is vocational, okay? Anyway, if you are really interested in something, uh, that is a hint 
that that's probably the the path for you okay the thing that you can choose and that you can build a career on okay it's just up to you and uh, the effort that you are willing to put into that career and okay that's the another single reason my shining stars that you are uh, first to 10th grade you have a compulsory subjects where you learn everything little bit right so ma'am we are running now late so we have just four minutes uh, so I believe uh, they will catch you and you please take out your precious time once again for them. And we would love that Sylvie um, should also come up. Even uh, ma'am, uh, as we are deciding to do group discussion, so for future, like they have a Georgian uh, student and Indian student group discussion. So maybe if you are having so uh, more students or, or one or two, so we can go with the two, two students group discussion also. So please let us know. And for the last, if you want to give some message to them. So yeah, over to you, ma'am. Um, I would really like to hear uh, Monish's question because he has he's had his uh, hand up for a while. So please, Monish, quickly. Yes, ma'am. I have a small question that is please. it necessary if someone is uh, good at subjects like uh, math science and the english and uh, languages and all then does he need, does he or she need a particular talent or will it uh, work if there is no talent and all um if you are interested in a subject and you are also talented it will be easier okay if you're not talented, you're going to have to work a little bit harder, but it doesn't mean it's impossible. Okay, as long as you're interested, you can choose that. If you also have the talent, good for you, uh, you're going to uh, find it a little bit easier. But uh, talent is good, but it's not absolutely necessary. Okay, not being born with a certain talent is an excuse not to, you know, choose a certain, a certain career. Um, well, because we had started and because I'm an English teacher and we started the discussion from the English language, uh, the thing is that whichever path, whichever career you choose, yeah, whether it's historian, archaeologist, uh, doctor, mathematician, astronomer, pilot, okay, uh, you are going to need to speak English. Yeah, you're going to need a good grasp of the English language, no matter what you choose to do. So, uh, yeah, maybe you can say we don't learn all of those subjects. Why do we have to know so much? Well, first of all, you have to know in order to be a smart person, an educated one. OK, and to have lots of opportunities to meet smart per people like you. Uh, but secondly, there are some subjects that are absolutely essential no matter what you choose to do. And English is one of them, okay? So learn English, study hard, listen to your teacher, okay? <laughs> and uh, yes, I will be seeing you again soon, okay? I promise. Let's say glad to be communicating with you, ma'am. It's a total gratitude for connecting with them. Connecting with you, ma'am. Nice to connecting with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes. And so yeah, you're amazing, my dear. to meet you, ma'am. And I hope Thank so you. Uh, you're like, ma'am, we will take Sylvia for the another session. Uh, and uh, we can get ready with the vice versa conversation for half an hour. So, Sylvia, my dear, okay, come back again. Because we haven't heard you yeah. today. We want to hear you more, all right? Yeah, I'll... I'll okay, uh, thank you so uh, much. I'll see if I'm available. <laughs> sure, sure. He will be. I will make sure that he is available. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I need to make sure for all of them to be available. Like since morning, I, I'm just glimpsing that. So thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you as well for the invitation, for the opportunity, for being here uh, this evening, all of you. Thank you so much. I know your time is precious too. I know you have homework and work to do and families and so on. Uh, but thank you for taking the time to be here. And I hope uh, it's been uh, useful to you seeing uh, 
uh, meeting all of us tonight. Exactly, right? Let's clap for ma'am. Let's say thank you to ma'am. Big big guys. Thank you so much. You're amazing. Lots of love from India. Lots of love from Romania as well. And I hope to, to see you again, all of you, soon. Sure, ma'am. Well, so... Uh, goodbye for now. Let's say bye-bye, guys. We'll leave bye. after you, ma'am. We'll leave after you.